Okay, hello to everyone. Um, I'm Paula Ronco. I'm a founder seat postdoc at Catolica University in Santiago, and I'm also part of the Nucleo Milenio de Formación Planetaria. Today I will talk about this work that we have recently submitted and that we did in collaboration with colleagues from Argentina, Chile, um, France, and Germany. Okay, so to start, uh, stellar multiplicity is uh, as it says here, the most common outcome of star formation. So here in the background, you can see the results of the first population synthesis study of star cluster formation and disk evolution that was developed by Bate in 2008 uh, through wider dynamical simulations. And as you can see, a very common byproduct of star formation is the formation of protoplanetary disks, like the ones, for example, that uh, were resolved by ALMA within the D-Sharp project, this, this uh, disk here. But these disks are orbiting only one star, okay? However, there are several, uh, by now there are several surveys that have been discovering many of these disks around binary and even in higher multiplicity star systems like the ones I'm showing here. This is a plot from GSA in 2019 from the Odyssea survey. And thus, um, to study this, this, this is of particularly importance um, because although it is still small, uh, the exoplanet population orbiting binary, uh, triple or even multiple star system is continuously growing by now we know more than 150 exoplanets uh, in this kind of environments, and we really need to understand how these planets form. So we already know that, that these around single star systems dissipate in time scales uh, between one and 10 million years, okay? However, this evolution around binary star systems is quite different. So for example, circumprimary disks, uh, these, these are disks that are orbiting only one of the stars in a binary, in a white binary star system. These disks are usually truncated uh, from the outside due to the torque exerted by the outer stellar companion. And this mainly imposes a problem for planet formation because there is usually less mass of gas and even solids uh, in the disk. And in this case, these dissipate faster, dissipate faster than the skin single star systems. Uh, on the other hand, these uh, circumbinary disks that are orbiting uh, both stars in a close in binary star system present inner cavities. These inner cavities um, are generated by the torques uh, that are generated by torques imposed by the inner binary. And in this case, uh, because the, the binary is injecting angular momentum to the disk, viscose accretion is usually halted or, or reduced. And because of this, the dissipation time scales in this kind of disk are longer. So the, the question is then, okay, the motivation particularly of this work is what happens for this clean triple hierarchical star systems like these ones, like this kind of uh, scenario. And uh, to, to understand or to, to, to study this, uh, in the first part of the talk, we will explore this scenario for a fixed disk in arbitrary triple star systems. And at the end of the talk, we will apply our model to this particular case. Uh, this is um, HD 98800B, which is a circumbinary disk orbiting one of the binaries in a quadruple star system. This disk particularly is very controversial because it's very old. It presents a, an age between seven and 10 million years, and it still presents significant amounts of gas and uh, there is absent of disk around the system, AAAB. So it's a very complex environment and it's really interesting to try to explain how this disk still exists. Okay, so then we here present uh, Planet B. Uh, Planet B is a 1D plus 1D model that computes the time evolution of the gaseous disk in a hierarchical triple star system. So that is uh, the the goal of, of our work. And uh, Planet Alp is mainly an extension of our previous work, Planet Alp, uh, which is a complete code of disk evolution and planet formation around single stars. So what we basically did was to adapt Planet Alp for this particular scenario. Uh, we are now able to compute the vertical structure of a disk uh, 
around the binary star system and affected by an outer stellar companion. Once we computed the vertical structure, we are able to um, compute the time evolution of the gaseous component of the disk, uh, which is modeled by this diffusion equation. So resolving this diffusion equation and allows us to compute um, how the gas surface density of the disk evolves in time due mainly to viscose accretion and photo evaporation. And we only consider photo evaporation from the inner uh, binary. We are not considering effects of photo evaporation from the outer stellar companion. And this term here is uh, representing the injection of angular momentum due to the inner binary and uh, the torque generated by the outer stellar companion. And uh, on something that uh, we also include is that we consider gas accretion by the tidal streams that usually produce in the inner cavity as a fraction of the stellar viscous accretion. And okay, and what is important us to say is that due to the axisymmetry uh, nature of our model, we consider circular and coplanar orbits for the inner binary, the outer stellar companion also, and for the disk. And the disk in, in our model is rotating in a gravitational potential, uh, which is given by the total mass of the inner binary. Here we show some of the results of our work. Um, this is a comparison between the time evolution of a circumbinary disk and the time evolution of a circumbinary disk affected by an outer stellar companion. In this case, uh, the inner binary system is formed uh, by two stars with a mass ratio equal to one and um, separation equal to 0.5 AU in for both cases. And we are using a fixed disk with uh, this, these parameters. Uh, this is the mass of the disk, the, um, the size of the disk, the alpha parameter is representing the, the viscosity and gamma is representing the, the way in which we uh, distribute the mass of the disk. Uh, it's an exponent of the of um, a potential load that it's representing the way we distribute the mass of the disk. So what it's interesting to show here is that for this particular case, we are not allowing uh, viscous accretion by tidal streams, and thus our disks are only evolving due to photo operation, so they are only losing mass by the X-ray photo evaporation due to the inner binary. And because the inner binaries are the same for both cases, the effect of photo evaporation is exactly the same. And, and as a consequence, both uh, these dissipate in the same time scale. But what is interesting to see here is that uh, although they dissipate in the same time scale, um, the way in, way in which they evolve is quite different. So for the triple star system, the disk is evolving on, almost locally. Uh, while for the circumbinary disk, the circumbinary disk uh, doesn't have any problem to expand freely uh, without any limitations. Uh, but this is, in this case, that uh, is not happening mainly because at 100 AU, uh, that it's, it is located uh, our external star that is truncated the disk uh, and the disk it cannot expand beyond approximately 30 AU. And because of this, as, as time um, evolves, uh, the gas uh, disk prof profiles for the triple, um, the disk in the triple star system is usually uh, always uh, higher than for the circumbinary case, as you can see here, if you compare uh, in the same color uh, profiles. And this could be important for planet formation, particularly gas giant planet formation, because it could be helpful if we retain a gas for longer time scales at the same location. Okay, so here now we show some uh, results for uh, different simulations that we perform for the same initial disk characteristics as we mentioned before. But now we consider different stellar um, parameters such as lower values of Q1. This is the mass ratio of the inner binary uh, stars. Uh, lower values of Q2. This is the mass ratio between the total mass of the inner binary and the mass of the outer stellar companion. Greater values of the semi-major axis uh, of the inner binary system and greater values of the separation between the inner binary and the outer stellar companion. So for example, if we look at the first two uh, pictures here, 
um, lower values of Q1 mainly imply that uh, the torque exerted by the inner binaries are is uh, the torques exerted by the inner binaries are weaker, and because of that the the viscous evolution of the disc is is filling the inner cavity, which results to be smaller uh, for lower values of Q1. And another consequence is that lower values of Q1 imply uh, lower values, uh, sorry, different values for the X-ray luminosity of the inner binary system because the X-ray luminosity depends on the masses uh, of the individual masses of the system. And for lower values of Q1, uh, the X-ray luminosity increases. And as a consequence, it also increases the massless rate due to photoapparation. And because of that, these disks evolve uh, faster than uh, this one, for example. Uh, the opposite happens if we consider uh, lower values of Q2. Lower values of Q2 mainly implies that the mass of the outer stellar companion is, uh, is lower. And this also implies that the torques are less important. And because of that, the disk is um, allowed to expand a bit more. And when this happens, the gas surface density profiles for lower values of Q2 are lower. And uh, at the consequence of that is that uh, the, mass, um, the mass loss rate uh, due to viscous accretion by tidal stream, which is usually computed uh, at the inner regions of the disk, uh, is, uh, is lower, okay? Because it's proportional to the gas surface density profile. And because of that, this disk uh, dissipates um, a bit uh, slower uh, than uh, that, uh, this one. Um, what else? Okay, if we now consider this, these two pictures, what we are showing here is that uh, greater separations of the inner binary confine even more the evolution of the disk uh, as a general result. And finally, uh, greater separations between the inner binary and the outer stellar companion, as we are showing here, um, do exactly the opposite. Uh, uh, I mean, this is, they allow that the gas disk expands much more. And in this situation, uh, for semi-major axes that are greater that, that, that than approximately 500 AU, um, the disk uh, dissipation time scales are almost the same as for the circumbinary counterparts. Uh, this means mainly that uh, the effect of the outer stellar companion is completely negligible for uh, semi-major axis or distances, separation distances uh, beyond uh, 500 AU. Finally, uh, we apply our model, we apply Planet B to the particular case of the quadruple star system HD 98800 which is formed by two spectroscopic binary stars, uh, binary star system, sorry, the system B and the system A. The disk is um, evolving around the system B. This disk is quite old, as I mentioned before, between seven and 10 million years, and there is no disk around the system A. And the, disk, uh, the orbital parameters of the system B are very well known, but this is not the case for for the system A. However, we, we know that there is uh, an estimation of the X-ray luminosity of the inner binary and of the outer binary, which um, Kastner in 2004 proposed that it's, or it could be approximately four times higher, or four times the, the X-ray luminosity of the system B. So the questions that we want to answer are, can we find these parameters that enables dissipation timescales greater than 7 million years for HD 98800B? And can we simultaneously show that a similar disk around the system A uh, could have been photoapparated faster? So what we did was to develop uh, several simulations considering different um, parameters for the disk in this case, but fixing the parameters, the orbital parameters for the system. And we also consider in different uh, uh, efficiencies for the accretion, uh, viscous accretion by tidal streams. And we simulated two disks um, that are exactly similar, um, but the second disk uh, that is trying to represent uh, the, the currently absent disk around the system A 
has an estimated X-ray photo uh, or X-ray luminosity, sorry, that it's four times uh, higher the estimated one for the disk uh, around the system B. So here you can see the results and these uh, highlighted results are the ones that uh, match all together. This is, these are the simulations that were able to simultaneously reproduce or to uh, form this uh, around the system B that evolves uh, in time scales that are greater than uh, seven million years approximately, and that this that evolved in less than seven million years. So these are the, the, the results of my, my work. Here I leave you my takeaway, uh, takeaway messages. We present Planet B, which is a 1D plus 1D model that is able to compute the time evolution of the gaseous component of circumbinary disks in triple hierarchical star systems in circular and coplanar orbits and that uh, mainly under certain these parameters, um, these, these parameters are mainly intermediate to high mass disk and moderate to low viscosities. We were able to particularly explain the estimated age and mass of the disk HD 9800B and, uh, uh, and simultaneously explain the absence of a disk around the system uh, A. So thank you very much for your attention.